I wonder if this is an interesting video. I think this is probably one of the things that I was most anxious to share. Ugh. I'm not used to letting this much light in when I feel like this. But obviously, if you want to see me, which you probably don't at this moment in time, then I have to have the curtains open. Yes, welcome to a Miko Hunter bad day. Um, I don't know where it came from. I did... I was editing. Let's be honest. Yesterday I didn't feel that good. But I, um, I edited all day. And... Uh, I don't know. Did I know that I was pushing myself? Yes and no. I didn't expect to have that kind of reaction so quickly because of my understanding of how the condition works. And this is where we should probably talk a bit more about how the condition is supposed to work. Um, and I think the best understanding I have of it is the... Um, explanation a physiotherapist gave me called the boom stroke bust to chronicity and that's explaining exactly how the condition works how you manage it um in order to keep it in line oh says so much easier said than done for example yesterday i'm telling you that i didn't feel great what i mean by i didn't feel great is my muscles were a bit heavy um, everything was a bit tight and stiff and s uncomfortable, not, not painful, but I had a, a lot of discomfort throughout my body yesterday. So I thought, well, rather than go out or do a massive load of housework or do something physical, I will sit down like I am now, propped up um, with my little gadget for using the laptop when I'm lying down and I edited all day and today what has happened is I, s I actually slept really well which is um, always a great thing and you expect when you've slept really well to be able to cope a bit better with the pain during the day but unfortunately I've woke up and I'm experiencing a lot of pain um, and to give you a sort of rundown of what that pain is <clears throat> I've got about three or four different things happening I have on my face um, nerves which seem to be really confused <clears throat> and overacting and giving me toothache, which the dentist has confirmed has nothing to do with my teeth. So there's that here. I also have burning pain, which is something I get on usually the first day of, of overexerting myself or the first day of a flare up. Um, and the burning pain just simply feels slightly under the skin and like sunburn like if you're purposely just keeping sitting in the sun when you know you shouldn't be that kind of like tight sort of hot feeling and i also have muscle aches in my shoulders and arms which is making filming really fun um I, this is a major problem because my head feels completely fuzzy and useless. Which is great because today I had planned to... Every, this is the thing as well, I feel like when I am in this state, um, it takes longer for what's in here to get out here. So I sound like I'm talking <laughs> like a robot. Um, I don't know if that's obvious to anyone else or just me. Hmm. So, I feel like I have no choice but to completely lie down to it, although I had set aside today for right. I've been working on my set for a show that's coming up in March, uh, a comedy show, and I've been writing that, and I, w I wanted to get to the stage of um, starting to memorise it, and I've got, for, for me, with having the fibre fog, there's a massive stages to 
trying to get something to, to get into my head and stay there. Uh, and I have actually found a good system. It's just that system takes longer than it would for somebody to just memorize something. So I have to start earlier. Um, so that get also that sort of thing gives me a little bit of anxiety is the case that now, because I feel like this, I feel the way I do today, that I'm not getting the work done that I should be. I wonder if anyone else can relate to this. Please let me know in the comments if you can relate to this. It's just not easy. I mean, you would think you would just do everything right and then you would feel better and that would be it. But doing everything right is easier than it sounds, even when the outcome is feeling better. Um, because doing everything right doesn't really explain about other things getting in the way. You know, like l normal life and, and things like that. Like, well, let's just go and look at the the charts on the boom stroke bus to chronicity. We'll look at how that works and I'll try to explain how it's just not as easy as it sounds. And if you are a sufferer of chronic pain, I'm sure you can relate to this. You may have heard before about the boom and bust cycle. I'll put up an example of it on the screen right now. It's a cycle whereby people with chronic conditions um, feel okay and then they do a lot of activity. Then they feel really bad and they have to rest and withdraw themselves. And then they feel anxious about not doing much. This is something I can heavily relate to. And this cycle goes on and on. Fairly easy to understand, um, but not explained as well as it could be. A physiotherapist explained this um, and called it the boom stroke bust to chronicity, descent into chronicity. Um, and, and I'll put a chart up on the screen right now. And what we're looking at, the top, uh, the top uh, left hand side of the chart is average capability. That's someone without fibromyalgia. Um, the black line in the middle is fibromyalgia capability, see mine, I mean, it's, this a chart can be a, sort of adapted to anybody's own condition, but see, that was my fibro capability. And then the red line is the actions of the person who has the fibromyalgia. Now, as you can see, um, the fibromyalgia capability is going along at a normal pace, and then the actions go out of that capability, they push through the capability. And what that does is then drop the actions because we don't have the energy and then that drops our capability. Now, if we continue on this boom bust cycle, what happens is our fibromyalgia capability, and I'm sure this applies to other chronic conditions as well, but our capability line goes down and down and down the more we keep breaking through it. Now, as you can see at the bottom, there's a part called the danger zone. And the reason that that's there is to explain that the longer that this pattern goes on and the less capable you become, the more likely it is to be harder to come back the way. So it's, it sounds quite bleak. Um, it's also not as easy as it sounds. Um, it sound, when I first heard this, I thought, oh, great, this is just like a pattern and we can follow it. And I'm, I'm afraid it doesn't work like that for me. So I wouldn't look at this as the be all and end all. But it's certainly something to help you get on the right track to managing your condition. The next chart that I'm going to put up, this shows the um, what would happen if we stayed with inner capability lines. The opposite happens. So the longer that we can stay within our capability lines, our capability lines creep up and up and up. But if we then break through that, it's going to creep back down. So it's just this constant balancing act. Um, it can be incredibly simple to sit and talk about this, you know, oh, just stay within your capability lines and, it, you know, it'll go away. And it, that's just not how it works. It's not that easy. This is a very simplified explanation of how the condition manifests and how you can manage it. But it doesn't always go in the pattern that you would expect it. To, and unfortunately for me, that's what's happening just now. And um, so I don't want you to look at these charts as the be all and end all. I also don't want you to look at these charts as a sort of victim blaming, you know, oh, well, if you are bad, then, it, you know, there's things you, you could be doing. It's all your fault. That is absolute rubbish. Never let anybody tell you that because these charts make living with this condition look so simple and it's it's just unfortunately not how it is. Most people with fibro don't have the opportunity to lie down for three months. Um, we all have commitments, um, jobs, families. Um, we're trying to, to sort of run a life here and because of the sort of lack of understanding for fibromyalgia, you are just expected as a sufferer to continue on as normal. So this you're just constantly playing catch up. 
I would say I use these charts as a helpful tool to manage my condition, but not something that I would bring any expectations from. You know, on a piece of paper, one to two months, three to six months, six to 12 months, yeah, that's a year. That's a, how many people do we know in our lives that have the opportunity to take a year off everything to recover from a condition? And this is the problem what, that we have. We're always playing catch up. Why? When I am so tired and so just worn down from the pain, why do I reach for sugary drinks and snacks when I know that that's not a long-term solution? And it's just trying to get your head into a position of not having that freedom to, do, to, to just be as loose with what you eat and what you drink because what you eat and what you drink can affect the condition and that's something that hopefully with doing this channel I'm going to do a lot more investigation into because I think for a long time I've just not been willing to accept that this condition isn't going anywhere because for a few years in between getting diagnosed and now there was about a three-year period where I had what I, I don't know what you would consider in fibromyalgia terms but I was flared up free for about three years and although I couldn't run a marathon and I couldn't go to the gym and do what like a regular person would be doing at the gym, I could function, I could walk an acceptable amount, I could walk up hills, I could work and I could do all these things. And then it came back. Um, and I think there was a certain complacency to not accept it it came back and just continue behaving the way that I'd been behaving when it when I was flared up free and that's something that has to stop because reaching for sugary drinks and eating you know junk isn't really going to isn't really going to help in the long term it's actually going to make things a lot worse so you can check me if you see me now with a red bull so I'm going to I'm going to try to lie down to this but I am super anxious about not being able to do what I was supposed to be doing today. However, I know that if I don't, if I just keep doing things and ignoring it, it's just going to get worse. So, I think this is probably one of the things that I was most anxious to share or most um, nervous to share was the bad days because you think it's quite self-indulgent and you know I don't want people to think that I'm constantly feeling sorry for myself I just want people to understand really especially if they have people in their lives with fibromyalgia I want people to be able to relate to the videos or you know we can share advice on our conditions if, I, if you see me doing something that you think could be better done a different way then I'd love to hear from your advice and I hope you can maybe pick things up from this video oh my neck hurts